as you can see, the sun's coming out. The weather's starting to change, which means I want to start using this trailer more, motorbike riding, and just generally getting out in the outdoors. One thing I need to do today before I go and use this trailer for something is fix up the axle. So I noticed a while ago that the hub on this left side was bent. I'm not actually sure how it was bent. I'm fairly sure that when I got the trailer, it was bent. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a new axle, a new set of springs, some new hubs and bearings. What I'm gonna do is just take the old one off, change it over, put it back on again, um, and fingers crossed that'll sort out the problem. First thing I'm gonna do is try and get you a, a, a shot of how badly bent the hub is from behind. I don't know if I'll be able to do that or not, uh, but I'll give it a go. off on both sides there's no point filming the other side it's taking the wheel off the trailer what I'm going to do now I'm going to undo these hangers on both sides and by undoing the hangers it's going to allow me to slide the axle out that's probably going to be the major part of this um, most of the time the hanger bolts and the thread get wrecked just from rocks being bashed around just life underneath the trailer um, a lot of people cut them off. I am thinking I may have to cut them off just by looking at them now. Um, but I'll do my best to undo them the cleanest way that I can. I'm not reusing them. Really try and avoid to reuse any components when you're changing them over like this. It's just not worth it. Those hangers are probably worth $10 each. And for the amount of grief they'll cause you, if you don't change them over trying to get nuts to thread onto them, it's just gonna, you're gonna pull your hair out. So. I'll get them off now and we'll slide this axle out. So the other thing to take into account when you put these hangers on is for the next person to help mate. A standard socket is not long enough to be able to undo those. So I tend to cut them down so you can get a standard socket on them. For this instance, you have to go the old fashioned way. And when you're doing this, try to do them in an even pattern. That way you don't load up one particular bolt because if you do, it'll just pinch and then you'll never get it undone and you'll be frustrated and angry and you'll hate your day. As the time flies by So many times I've forgiven you In my bolts on this side actually weren't that bad I managed to get the nuts off fairly easily so I'm gonna wash rinse repeat on the other side come back get this off so given that these are still stiff what you can do is now I can see up behind the bolt on the nut rather Get a little bit of a little bit of spray on the back side of it as well. Just help get right in there. Probably can't see it on the camera, but the thread's actually steaming when I spray the, the CRC on it because there's so much friction with me trying to undo these nuts. That's all right, we'll get there. Just 
get these down a touch lower. I'll be able to rip them off with the socket. I get no sleep. All right, so I just gave these a bit of a tap. The hammer. Just because the corrosion, they don't want to really come off that easily, but look at that. There we go, that side of the axle is now free. This axle, like that, and there we go. Axle is loose from under the trailer. I was just trying to find a straight edge to put on this axle, but if you can see, we're straight there. As I slowly pan up right coming into frame now, you'll see there's the bend. And that little bit there, that's probably, that's probably only about five mil on the actual axle bent. The difference between here and here is probably only about five mil, but if you were to continue that line, if you drew that line a meter further past this, then that would be really exaggerated. So that's what the problem is. And I can see it's even where the hang has been. So this tube possibly is not even an axle, it's something else I'm not sure the previous owners used, but I can see down the other end it's been quite badly bent also so I'm really happy that I'm changing this over now and we can get a trailer that's going to sit nicely have a good stance and uh, track straight down the road all right so the next piece of the puzzle is to get these springs out now uh, really basic springs lesson this is called a slipper spring and the reason it's called a slipper spring is because this end is literally able to slip through a hanger so this has the ability to slide backwards and forwards as the spring is compressed um, only one fixed point up there, so I'm going to put some penetrating, penetrating lube on that and um, get that undone and then drop it off and we can start putting the new hardware back on. I may as well spray the other side at the same time. Alright, so just a note on safety here. Always, always be super careful whenever you're getting under something that's on jack stands or on a jack, because you never know what could happen. Especially if you don't get the right size socket. This side, the bolt that holds the spring in is longer than what will fit in my socket. So, just try and break it free. Another option I can try is actually doing it from this side. As you'll see, the vice grips are turning around. They'll actually do the job of another set of hands for me because they'll hit something and that'll grab and that will allow me to undo because they can't rotate any further. And we'll get to the point where the bolt and the nut will become that loose that they'll just fall back around again and I'll grab them. About now, sounds good. Look at that. 
screens are off. Springs are attached. Axle, one solid axle, it's quite heavy. Alright, so what I'm going to do, <clears throat> just going to roughly set this up so that get both sides on the ax on the springs where they're meant to be and then I'm gonna just do a final adjustment left to right to make sure that we're sitting exactly where I want it to sit. Good habit is to always have all your nut and bolts close by as well. Otherwise you get yourself into a box of licorice all sorts trying to hold things and just loosen it off a touch so I can still slide. I'll go do the same on the other side. Come back and we'll start doing some measurements for this axle, make sure it's plumbing where it needs to be. Okay, so we're at a part now that's fairly, um, fairly important. You have to make sure that the distance from any set part of the axle, so whether it be where this chamfer starts or the end of the thread here, is the same on both sides. So that way the axle is square underneath the trailer. So what I'm gonna do is, I know that these springs are solid and they're a square edge. I'm gonna measure out from the, out from the spring to where they've started this chamfer here on a lathe. Um, I know that both sides are gonna be within a couple of mil if I do that, and I'm happy with one or two mils tolerance on measuring. So that is 198. Let's go see how the other side looks. So the other side was quite a bit less. Um, so I've pulled it back that way a little bit. Just going to re-measure here. So the other side I pulled to 190. This is now 185. I'm just going to adjust this a tiny bit. So we come to there. So that gives me. 194 on that side, 188 and 189, I'm happy with that. So what I'll do now, I'll tighten up those hanger nuts, pull that nice and tight and we'll get some hubs on. Again the same when tightening, just try and do it nice and evenly so that you're not pinching. anything and you because otherwise what will happen is you'll get a false sense of oh that with anything really you'll get a false sense of oh that nut or bolts tight when in actual fact it probably won't be it'll just be the friction it's bound and as soon as you tighten up the other side or if you level it off you'll find that um, you'll find that it'll probably be looser than what you think it is
good rule of thumb, anything like this, anything that has the ability to flex in it, is always check it. So I'll take this for a drive once I'm done today. I'll check it after a 10 minute drive and then I'll check it after a half an hour drive. And I'll always have a, a, a spanner with me if I go somewhere that way I can just tighten it up like this. All right, I'll do the other side and come back. Right, so this particular kit came with some extra bolts. Just to lock these on, so we'll put them on and then we can uh, assemble the hubs. So I'll get all them on and come back. All right, so next thing we need to do is just pack some grease and season bearings. Never, ever, ever is a clean job. you're really trying to do is squeeze from the bottom. You're just trying to squeeze grease through here up this direction so that it comes out into the center of your bearing. Everyone's got a different way of doing this. Everyone's right, everyone's wrong. You know what? Do it the way you like doing it. It'll be gonna be different to my way. At the end of the day, just get grease in your bearings. Grease is really important in bearings. See it's starting to come through. I don't know how well it's coming through on the camera, but it's, I can see it's coming through there. No worries, which is great. Like I said, a very, very, very dirty job. You now I just give these a little bit of a bit of love. Look at that. A greasy bearing is a happy bearing. All right, do that. And I'll repeat that on the other ones. When you're doing this kind of thing is make sure you're using the right quality grease. Don't cheap out on grease. Grease is cheap. Bearings, when you've got to replace them, is not cheap. Or when your axle, when your hub falls off the side of your trailer going down the freeway, that's not cheap. Don't be, don't be tight with these. And maintenance. Maintenance on bearings on trailers is huge. Just check them, take the caps off them. You know, you could probably grease your bearings in the amount of time it would take you to probably make a good coffee. So make a good coffee, get your grease out, grease the bearings on anything. Anything from trailers, mowers, anything that's greasable, grease it. All right, these are looking pretty good. So I'm gonna ditch the disposable gloves and uh, we'll get these on the axle. I've dropped that bearing in there. There's a chamfered edge in there, so it sits like that. It's like a cone, and the bearing, as you would have seen, is the same. So I've dropped that in there. I've got this dust cover. I'll tap that dust cover on there, and I'm going to pump grease into there. So there's always plenty of grease around that bearing. I don't care if grease goes everywhere. I just need this bearing and this uh, mechanism to have plenty of lubrication moving forward. in there. Let's uh, slide that on. I'm hoping that you can see alright because I know the sun's fairly bad. But here. Got that on there. I'm going to put the front bearing on. Just going to slot this front bearing on here for the minute, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that up, and that will pull that hub back onto the axle. So I've done the other side. Just 
carrying on from where I was before. Put this locking nut in. The best way to do bearings is always to do it by feel. I've also got to take note of where that's unlocking hole is, which is there. We go to there, it's starting to get sticky. Too bad, I'll get another quarter of a turn out of the bit more well, maybe. Yeah, fix Put that in. Possibly a bit too much. I might back that up one turn, one one notch. I'll do is I'll put them on and then um, I'm going to um, I'm not going to put the pins in yet because if I put the pin in what will happen is it'll stop me from being able to rotate that. I'm going to put the tire on now and we'll see how easily the tire free spins. We might have to back that off a tiny touch. Alright so I've just compressed the spring so that I can get this tire on a bit easier. these up these nuts are cone so as they go in they straighten the rim up on the stud. Just give these a little bit of a bit of a tighten up. Like so and then I'll drop this on the ground and I'll be able to than fighting with it like that. Of that, the one I dropped out. I had a bit of problem with um, the new microphone that I've got. I've got a lapel mic to see so hear me um, with a bit of ambient noise. I'm trying to cut that down. So, apologise if that did happen during this. I'm going to work on that for the next one. So, overall, great success. As you saw, took the unit for a drive. Drove really well. There's actually a, a, a more spongier feeling when you're towing this trailer now, which is good. It's not rigid. It doesn't hop along behind you. Um, I did choose to only go with a, um, a light to medium duty spring on this trailer as it's only carrying mainly motorbikes um, and lightweight sort of things. It doesn't need to have a really high load rating and it also handles a lot better. And around where I live, the roads are sort of bumpy and rough and quite, um, quite curvy. So it does work well having a softer spring setting. So now so, that this is done, um, really exciting. Can move on to a couple of other different projects that I've got on the go. The reason I needed this done was so that I could go and pick up some parts for the jet ski, um, which is almost done. If you do um, want to see some updates on that, there will be some regular updates on that plus other projects that I'm doing uh, on my Instagram. And I will put the Instagram link in the description of this video. So if you want to follow and see where we're at with all that, that'd be great. Um, and feel free to share it around. I'm really thankful for everyone that's watching the videos. I'm surprised the amount of people that watch the videos. It's actually really nice to know that the content that I make um, is stuff that you guys like to see. And whether it's the way I make it or the way I do it, I'm not sure. But feel free to let me know because I really want to keep doing, um, keep doing it the way I'm doing it. Be happy to make some changes also. So that's it for this one. We're done. I look forward to uh, seeing you all soon in the next video. Let's go.